For generations, science fiction writers have been generating enthusiasm for space travel. But that's what sending civilians in space has always seemed like, science fiction. Space was the realm of rocket scientists, astronauts and NASA. But today, the reality of spending your annual break at the International Space Station is a reality. All it may require is some training and around $20 million or so. And so our plan, Space Adventures plan, and our announcement today is that we have secured two seats, uh, which for the first time ever are available on the same rocket to fly two people to the International Space Station in a mission in the beginning of 2005. But most people that are going to go up have wanted to do this probably most of their lives. And uh, they have their reasons and they have a pretty good idea what it's going to look like. They just don't have an idea what it's going to feel like. And it's best to save it for the flight. It is so different than life on Earth. It's like life on another planet and uh, like being a different species almost. And Dennis Tito knows firsthand. He became famous as the world's first space tourist. Mark Shuttleworth, the first from Africa. I must say I'm a little envious of uh, whoever gets to be on that flight in 2005. I think uh, while many of us dream of uh, flying in space, once you've been, uh, it uh, comes dangerously close to becoming an addiction. Dennis Tito paid his own way on a Russian Soyuz spacecraft to spend a week on the International Space Station. He was followed a year later by South African internet millionaire Mark Shuttleworth. In order to participate on the flight, Shuttleworth had to undergo one year of training and preparation. The fourth space tourist, tech businesswoman Anoushe Ansari, went up on a Soyuz spacecraft in 2006. Ansari set many firsts with her flight. She became the first female space tourist, the first Muslim woman in space, and the first Iranian in space. While it is known that Tito and Shuttleworth paid about 20 million US dollars to go into space, Ansari's agreement with the Russian space agency forbids her from talking about how much she paid for her ticket. But the price was the last thing on Ansari's mind as she prepared for the trip. For her, it was all about the experience. At the end of it, they all say, just make sure that you enjoy every moment of it and take in every breath and uh, just remember the experience and try to uh, cherish every moment of the experience. So I think um, a lot of the experience is on depends on the individual and it will differ. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to capturing my feelings and my experiment experience while I'm flying and when I get to the space station, and then I will share it with everyone upon my return. NASA has studied the possibility of commercial space flight. One study suggested that space cruisers could be a viable industry, but showed that NASA would have to charge $10 million per ticket just to break even. However, there are private companies that are hoping to sell seats on shuttles making suborbital flights. Suborbital flights to heights of 100 kilometers above the Earth require much less energy than the orbital flights. I think it will still be a long time before orbital spaceflight is accessible to anybody. Uh, but certainly, we're moving from having a few people fly to tens of people and then hundreds of people and thousands of people, you know, over the next 10 or 15 years. Ansari, the first female space tourist, landed safely back on Earth to red roses and a warm welcome from her husband. It seems space exploration will remain both prohibitively costly and dangerous enough that only a few civilians will be given the opportunity.